the things that hurt a lot of Pac-12 schools last year. Exactly. That was a game last year where they may have not won, but they were able to pull it out. Norman Powell lets go, and Anderson sneaks in, but his shot swatted away. Uh, Anderson, a good rebounder, obviously for his size, and it didn't. He went after that ball with no hesitation. So a good sign for UCLA that he's not thinking about that wrist at all. Uh, Moore, James Madison, put that ball off to the side, but still possession to UCLA. Larry Drew, who made the game winning Tuesday. And Tuesday night, UCLA was able to establish the Ware brothers early. See if they go to him again. First four minutes of the game, they combined for 14 points Tuesday. Inside out, both of them. Very set up top, and Drew, who didn't shoot well for much of the game Tuesday, that's a better start. No, but made the biggest play of the game for UCLA, the game winner, driving to the layup turning down the ball screen, going left all the way to the rim for that game winner. There's the man you're talking about. That's A.J. Davis. He slashed nicely, got to the rim. Powell hits the baseline jumper. That's what's so different about UCLA this year. Get the ball down the court, get it into the hands of guys that can make plays. Norman Powell with a short jumper. Some NBA guys here to watch Davis tonight, too. He's a good size for his position, good athlete. Talked about the NBA range. He's definitely an NBA prospect. Davis guarding Powell on the Powell now curls to the top. A step back by David Ware. Does he go? Rebound by Moore for James Madison. James Madison definitely undersized in this game, so it's going to be one of the storylines. Can they deal with the Ware brothers? Can they deal with Tony Parker and Josh Smith when they come in? Irvine had, I would say the other night, UC Irvine had more size, didn't they? You say about the same? same? Yeah. Maybe a little more, but UCLA's got to rebound the basketball better. They haven't made anyone pay yet. Now, granted, it's only two games into the season, but they've given up 33 offensive rebounds, UCLA has, to lesser teams. So certainly an area they need to clean up as they go through this preseason time. Oops, stepped out of bounds to Charles Cook for James Madison. A good ball movement by UCLA. Powell with the driving kick, and you wonder if that play Drew too made at the end of that game Tuesday gave him a little jolt of confidence maybe to start playing with a little more confidence on the offensive end. And Drew got stuck then tried to emergency pass Davis. Well, A.J. Davis now in the first two, three minutes of the game, Don, we've seen he's gone to the rim three times and got there, has not been able to finish yet, this time foul. And the scouting report on him again is that he's got good range as well. So when you have that balance and you can get to the rim and make threes, that makes you pretty <laughs> tough to guard. Now, you don't think college basketball can be a strange sport. A.J. Davis is from Columbus, Ohio. <laughs> I played, know where you're going with He this. played, and I remember seeing him a little bit, he played his first two years of college at Wyoming. At Wyoming. Yeah, I'm not sure how you get from uh, that part of the country to that part of the country and back. Well, I, a little bit of a, a connection in that. As Davis misses both foul shots, the man who had been the coach of Wyoming at the time had heavy Ohio roots. And then that coaching change he happened. To. He transfers to James Madison in Virginia. He had to have to get from Ohio to Wyoming. Charles Cook missing the wing three, but a second try for James Madison. I always wonder about the effect of Pauley Pavilion on opposing teams, especially from non-BCS conference teams coming in here. You know, are you in awe of this building? Obviously, this team, if you see Duff go to the basket, these teams aren't on TV a lot either. And so the moment almost takes them three, four, five minutes just to settle down and start playing. Well, Allion Duf got James Madison their first basket. David Ware answers and won. UCLA runs a lot of screen roll, too, and that was Pal coming off. But that's the key with the Ware brothers is they can roll and they can pick and pop. And Pal with the nice delivery there. So David Ware 
try to make a three-point play out of this for UCLA. Now the Bruins got off quickly Tuesday. They had a, a, a brief all to do double-digit lead against UC Irvine. That was one of the stories of the game was they opened it up in the first 10 minutes and could not hold it. You know, 13 and nine and a half rebounds in the first two games for David Ware, about what you'd expect from him. I think you can count on him for near double-digit rebounds all year. Anderson wound up saving it. The ball quickly moved nicely by Drew, spotting up Powell. I think that's the one area where Norman Powell, and he's known for his athleticism, he's going to figure out that if he gets down the court and gets to space, the Drew 2 is going to get it to him. And it doesn't have to be a three every time. It does, you can be inside the line, but be ready to catch and shoot. He's done that twice already here tonight. Boy, that was a terrific battle down low off the ball. Larry Drew got stuck on Semenov, a bigger guy. He ended up fronting him. They tangled up locked arms and a foul. If you, if you got a point guard that's willing to throw the lead pass, just get yourself some room so you can knock it down. UCLA up early. A wing pass, pop the shot. They've That's never done that. Exactly. Yeah. I think Ernie. We. I think Ernie. You should just go Friday night to the Rose Bowl and just sleep there. <laughs> just stay there, Ernie. I'm sorry, I'm trying to find something. What are you going to do? And what's the count at now? Wow. That was beat Georgetown. That was who James Madison did. Lost to Pac-12 basketball brought to you by State Farm for auto, home, life, and banking. Get to a better state. And by Frostbrood Coors Light, the game's most refreshing beer. Hall champions, are they proud of that at UCLA? 108 national championships. Basketball's contributed a fair share. 11 of them. Yeah, Larry Drew. A good floor game the other night, even though he was shot four of 13. He had eight assists, two turnovers. And I mentioned James Madison maybe being a little off of being here in Pauly and a big shot for Semenov, but one of six to start before that make. Andre Semenov, another of the fifth year seniors from St. Petersburg, Russia. UCLA coaches were concerned about him in the scout. Really, a you know, big guy that can really pick and pop as you see David Ware knock down another shot. UCLA's now made five out of ten from the floor to start. Pretty sharp offensively, and we talked about in the open, Ted. It's going to come down to the consistent effort on the defensive end, yes. as it does for a lot of teams, but in particular this UCLA group, because we know they're going to score. They're too talented, as Jordan Adams speaking of scoring now in the game. And James Madison there got Semenov. He kind of slid off of that screen, and UCLA didn't go with him. He had a good look. Well, a lot of ball screens just like the other night against Irvine. And, well, there's one example of the size difference. You cannot handle him when he gets that deep a post position. 
He's just too heavy. Goes right through the defender, gets the foul. And Swindle's not a small guy. But Josh Smith is too powerful once he gets that deep, able to get that one to go down. Three point play opportunity. Now, Josh Smith, 14 minutes play the other night. And we referenced this, Don, what stood out in those 14 minutes a lot to me for a guy of his size. He had four steals. Yeah. He's got long arms, and, and he's able to poke balls away. He obviously, because of his size, doesn't move his feet as well, but he's got long arms to kind of poke balls away when guards come off those ball screens. All right, so UCLA. Smith and Adams coming in off the bench. UCLA standing a little bit here. Yeah. Travis Ware and Kyle Anderson went out at that first timeout. And Josh Smith gets fouled for a second time by James Madison's Gene Swindle. Basketball doubleheader tomorrow again. This is week of hoops. Glory continues with Pac-12 Networks. We'll start at the Huntsman Center in Salt Lake City and then up to the mat in Eugene for a good game between Vanderbilt and Oregon. Vanderbilt, one of those programs that gets overshadowed, but Kevin Stallings has he them does. in the tournament every year. Had NBA players on their team yes. last year. Yeah, one of them, uh, Golden State Festus Ezeli. John Jenkins. A lot of minutes. John Jenkins. Playing yeah. for the Hawks. Well, Josh Smith, five points, five rebounds in 13 and a half minutes so far this season in two games. And you would say that's pretty good production for 13 and a half minutes, but I think everybody, UCLA coaches especially, would like to see more than 13 and a half minutes. More minutes. That's exactly right. Yeah. The no One thing I learned hanging around you basketball guys when I was a young guy, that's the category y'all looked at. You figure the numbers will follow if the minutes are yeah. there, right? So stay out of foul trouble, mm -hmm. and can you have a sustained effort for longer, for long stretches of minutes? And that's mm -hmm. always been the case with Josh mm -hmm. Smith since he's been here at UCLA. Thought we'd see more of an up and down game so far. James Madison, the book on them was guard, get it down the court. A lot of ball screens, a lot of dribble handoffs, but so far I think it's because they've been taking it out of their own net a lot. How about that spike? And Aaron, the first subs for James Madison, they put some freshmen in. See, here's why it's frustrating, Ted, because now you get it. This is different than what we've seen out of Josh Smith mm -hmm. the first two games. Aggressive post-ups, aggressive on the offensive board, active on the defensive end, right? You don't get that every game from yeah. Josh Smith, and that's what makes it frustrating. Oh, nice pick and roll play. Put two shots home, and eventually fires it away. And if you sit here as I do Don for the second straight night I see things like that and I wonder about your point is that what Paulie does to it because how many of those did Irvine miss the other night? point blank exactly blanks, point blank shots exactly I mean, that's a perfect pick and roll play and Swindle had two chances I think it does having done UCLA games for as mm -hmm. long as I have mm -hmm. and not so much the conference teams but the the non-conference non-BCS conference schools that come in here really are the ones that you see it sometimes well, Josh Smith is having a, a pretty good three-minute sequence here coming in. I'd like to see Coach Allen leave him in and see if he can't sustain it, you know, and build off of this. Six points, two rebounds for Smith in those three minutes that he's played. James Madison has Andre Nation and Ron Curry, two pretty well thought of freshman backcourt players on the court here, and that's Nation knocking down his first shot. Deep three. Kyle Anderson's got to close out a little bit better than that. That's the one way. And we talked about this on Tuesday night with Irvine. That's the one way that James Madison's going to stay in this game is by making some threes. Look at that. That's pretty calm by Anderson, everything except the finish. How long did that take? Yes. That nobody takes it from him ever, right? That dribbles high and everything else, but nobody ever takes it from him. Great call. And he spun both. Now he's out running the floor. And there's that spin again. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, now we've seen three spins 
in two possessions, and he's gone each way with the spin. The first spin was too easy at the rim to finish. He's got to use the rim, go other side, and flip it off the backboard. Degree of difficulty high. You see the talent of Kyle Anderson. Not many guys at that size can do that. This is Ron Curry. He's from New Jersey. And he's a well-regarded recruit. Landed by James Madison. Ball again rejected at the rim. Anderson set up. Adams the spot three. I was just getting ready to say Adams averaging 20, 23 and a half a night coming in. Hasn't gotten a touch. Knew that wasn't going to last for long. Adams did not make a three Tuesday night. Did most of his damage at the line. But UCLA has responded, as you would imagine. They heard a lot from their coach. Coach is about the Tuesday night game, and they've employed what they heard the first nine minutes tonight. We talked about defense in the open for UCLA. Eight points in nine minutes for James Madison. Now, I think some of that is the jitters for James Madison, but I do think UCLA is a little more engaged on the defensive end and here's Anderson on the break to catch the usage of the rim the finish with that right hand with the tape on that wrist that he hurt the other night doesn't seem to be bothering him at all St. Anthony High School in New Jersey if you're a basketball fan you hear St. Anthony High School you think of one name Hurley wow. father and sons sons yeah. all right Saturday football on the Pac-12 Networks, our noon game will be from Tempe, Arizona State, trying to get a win to be bowl eligible in their first year with Todd Graham. That'll be the noon game. And then Saturday night from Corvallis, Oregon State, trying to stay in play for a big bowl game. They'll host Cal. Football pregame 6.30 right here on the Pac-12 Networks. Anderson now with the ball, running the show up top, started at small forward. Really surprised. I know I already mentioned it that the pace of this game. I thought it would really be a lot faster. And from the win, well, this is an element that we didn't see much of Tuesday from the Bruins. The outside shot. Well, I like the balance too. It's not everything going to the rim, trying to draw fouls. It's take the threes when they're there, the jumpers, and then drive it when it's there. Talked about this the other night, Don. This is what UCLA is going to need to prove is that they can knock down shots. Exactly. I think that's the one area on the offensive side of the ball that they got to prove that they can make threes consistently. Jordan Adams with the drive, with the kick. Powell ready to knock it down.
Back at the new Poly Pavilion, UCLA up big on James Madison early 26 to 8. A big reason why the three ball, three for four so far in the game, only shooting 21% as a team coming into this one from behind the line. So maybe this will be a good confidence builder for this UCLA team from behind that line. Only two for 12 on Tuesday, but as we just talked about, Ted, an area where I think, especially when they get into conference, teams are going to make UCLA prove that they can consistently make three-point shots. And, and you, you obviously you want it to be a lot of guys. Does it have to be more than one guy for UCLA? It doesn't have to be, but I think there's more than one guy that has the ability to do it. I think Powell can become a consistent shooter. Adams, obviously, we've already talked about. Drew, too. So everyone doesn't have to shoot 40% from behind the line, but as a team, you have to be able to knock one down if people are going to try and zone you all the time, which is what happened last year to UCLA. Rayshon Goins with that basket for Madison. And Diouf picks up a foul. That's why everybody thought getting Jordan Adams, obviously people talked about Anderson, Muhammad, and Parker, but a lot of people thought, me included, that Adams would really help them in that area where, hey, if you're going to zone us, we're going to put Adams out there, and he's going to light you up from behind that line. UCLA's got to be careful not to get sloppy here. Sometimes when you get off to a really big lead early, you kind of turn the engine off a little bit. They got to keep playing. It's way too early, obviously. And AJ Davis again got in to the basket. He's been able to do that tonight. He hasn't knocked any of them down yet. And Travis Ware back in. His turnaround got contested. Came with the double on it, late double to get a piece of that. like that for college players to back down. It seems like the lane, you see Goins knock down a three. Get some space. If you're going to ISO a guy the mid post, get yourself 15 feet so that help can't come. Tony Parker, the roll in the lane. And if you're deep posted like that, go quick. Don't wait for that defense. Get it and go. Especially with a smaller team like James Madison, no rim protection. Get, it, get into that painted area and get it up on the rim. Moore rocks the backboard with that. Eight Bruins have played, seven have scored. Nice pass. And Parker will have a chance for three. Norman Powell could have taken that himself. Nobody would have said a word. Makes the extra pass. Parker goes up strong, takes the hit right here. He drops it, but then right here, he could have gone straight to the rim, pass the defender, dumps it off to Parker instead. Defensive rotations right now for James Madison, not real good. Although on the last possession, they did rotate over and get a piece of the Travis Ware shot. And we're 11 and a half minutes in, Don, would you say no intensity difference for UCLA? I would say noticeable. I think, I wouldn't say from an intensity standpoint, I would say from a being engaged standpoint. They look like they're a little more focused on what they're doing tonight. Ooh, there's a good running push up by Ron Curry. Let it fly. Oh, Adams. <laughs> when you, you just hey. watch him and you, and you just say to yourself, that's a shooter. You don't even attempt that shot yeah. unless you are supremely confident in your ability to make three balls. And quick. You talked about this, Don, the other night, how quick he gets it all. Oh, nice mm -hmm. step there's back Davis. there, and there's Davis's first points. There's the Davis we heard about, but that's the point. I mean, Jordan Adams isn't even going to think about that, and he gets it away quick because there's zero hesitation. He knows it's going up the minute he catches it. So doing it a little different tonight is Jordan Adams from behind that line, not as much drive. Now stepping out on a curl. Yep, Adams, eight points, two threes, and that jumper. The best shooter Ben Hallen has had since he's been at UCLA. We knew that coming in. He's proving it game by game. After the ball ended up with Larry Drew, looks like James Madison going to be called there for the foul. And that's going to get us to the under eight timeout. A 36 point start for UCLA.
was right the other night. I'm wrong tonight. What's that? They're going to wipe these guys. Pac-12 basketball brought to you by East. Them tonight and some, with me, like I said, that's why I like that shot. The first one when they pushed it up here and Powell hit the ball from mm -hmm. over here and now that one with Jordan. That's just catch and shoot. Boom. It's what, well, and if what he's done his whole life. Well, probably, right? and if your bigs are running, if you yeah. miss, you still got an right. opportunity right. to get an offensive rebound. Alabama beat Oregon State. Oregon, how, they play in Corvallis? No, they played in New York. Oh, some tournament there. Okay. Tim Floyd going to Tucson. Yeah. Pac-12 basketball brought to you by eSurance. Now offering savings for Pac-12 students and alumni. Find out more at eSurance.com slash Pac-12. And by Quicken Loans, engineered to amaze. Another great night outside of Pauley Pavilion as we swing into this first full week of men's basketball. And there's some things to watch yeah. for the Pac-12. This isn't everything, but some of the things to, to think about. November, December, critical for the conference. We talked about the RPI, Washington being the regular season champion, not getting into the tournament. These games are critical. Arizona, UCLA with their recruiting classes look to be back. There's plenty of good freshmen around the league, not just at Arizona and UCLA. The tournament this year, Moving to Las Vegas, that's a change. And then how many in the NCAA tournament? Only two last year. A lot of people, including me, think it's going to be at least four, maybe five, maybe six. Well, one thing that the whole conference wants to achieve is to ensure that what happened last year is never repeated where your regular season champion yeah. does not go to the well, not get to madness. But that was due in large part to what happened this time of year, losing the lesser teams and bringing the conference RPI down so that when you get into conference games, winning or losing games doesn't mean anything because everyone's RPI is too low as Adams has it rolling here again tonight. He had 10 points. I mean, how many points is UCLA going to score in the first half? They got 38 with 640 to go. Goins is defended well by Parker. James Madison Goins comes back in, and this time Parker gets a clip of him, and Parker will be called. I mean, the poise of Jordan Adams as a true freshman playing it. This is UCLA he's playing at, by the way. Averaging 23 and a half coming in and just knocking down jumper after jumper. Here again tonight, 10 in the game. Sean Goins had a shoulder injury, missed a lot of last season. In fact, missed all of last season. That's a lot. And uh, got his weight down a little bit, got his body a little better together to come back and play yeah. his fifth year. Kind of a big baby type, bigger body but skilled, can put it on the floor, can shoot it. He's already made a three. Effective for James Madison. Adams lost it, trying to dribble into all those James Madison jerseys, and Goins puts it back. Well, again, I mentioned it earlier, the UCLA got to continue to play. You need to use these games not just for getting Ws, but for working on your stuff. And we've already talked about the opposition's offensive rebounding. Powell knocks down another three. You know, those are areas not of concern, but things you got to work on. And at the other end, James Madison converts. Ron Curry. No, that can't happen on him if you're UCLA. And there, Powell, or excuse me, Adams, it is Drew one. Adams going up there and hitting the deck after shooting his three. You don't foul jump shooters, and especially this guy in the scouting report. I'm sure James Madison went over and said, look, do not foul number three. Guy made all 16 on Tuesday night. 
TJ Davis foul 17 on James Madison. What was your career? You were what? You were 90, weren't you? For oh, your career here? Not for my career. I shot 92 my senior year. I think I was a career 85-ish, six maybe, some, somewhere in there. Yeah. Made enough of them. To make a living. <laughs> you were talking about that the other night, and it's so true. Adams calmly knocks down all three, 13 points, and you think back to guys, and I, my ancient era, a great player, Hall of Famer Adrian Dan yeah. made his living well, it, at it, six foot four by being in the paint, getting fouled, and then making eighty-eight percent of his foul shots. Uh, and that was my point the other night. Yeah. It, it's a tool if you can make free throws because now you, you work on ways to get fouled and make make yourself good at that so that you can get to the line because you know you can make them and Goins stepping out yeah. again. That's his game. He's a he's a guy that can face the basket and drill it. He's made two threes. down out of five minutes in the half and what UCLA very much wants us to make sure that they don't let James Madison have any run here. Yeah, it's what Irvine got off the floor at right. halftime right in the game. The other. Well, the lead wasn't this big no. the other night either, but to your point, give them any sense of hope. You know, you're up 19. You can put teams away in the first half, just take their will, but yeah. James Madison gets this thing down around 10 before halftime. They think with some adjustments, they can come back in the second half. Five fouls on UCLA. James Madison is seven, so Bruins are shooting in the bonus here. As Luke goes across there, and that's the first points for Travis Ware. And now all eight Bruins have scored in this first half, which is getting them close to 50. Well, that's the one thing UCLA needs to continue to do. Forget about the scoreboard, but they're trying to transition into being a fast-breaking team. And that takes practice. It seems simple. Oh, you just run. Well, no, you got to practice running. You got to make it a habit. And so, even though you're up big, don't start walking it up the court. If your new identity is going to be pushing the ball and being a fast-breaking team, you have to do it no matter what the score is. It is a commitment. State Farm halftime report coming up with a look around the night in the Pac-12. Arizona's playing at home. Tim Floyd is there with his UTEP Miners, and of course Don McLean is heading to Don't miss Arizona. That. Don't miss that part of the halftime. My desert trip Don. coming up this weekend. We're going to promote a little. Uh, <laughs> we're going to promote a little idea for Don's swing through Arizona. Of course, uh, just a, a load of basketball up and down the ten from Tempe to Tucson. Maybe we should have some cameras in the car and follow follow us around all weekend. Oh, nice scoop. Well, Ron is. Now they get a, are they doing that both ways here? No, no basket. basket. No basket. It's going on Curry. Nice job by Kyle Anderson. Hurt wrist and all yep. to step in there and take that hit. Stepped in, had established himself facing the shooter outside the circle. I can't believe I actually said that. <laughs> I'm not sure I could. I'm not sure I could repeat that. <laughs> Staying with it, and then Josh Smith just kind of reaches over some James Madison guys and bats the ball in. Not sure if he tipped that in or not. I think that was a James Madison player that knocked that one in. Posting Kyle Anderson. I mean. What doesn't this guy do? He brings it up, he plays small forward, he posts smaller guys. Does so many things. Now he's leading the break. It, it is, a, that's a nice hook by David Ware. You said something that really was evident on that play. Kyle Anderson does not play at what appears to be a high gear, high speed. No. But he moves. Well, we talked about it the other night. He's different than most yeah. highly regarded players now are terrific athletes that are a little bit underskilled. He's the opposite. He's really skilled, 
and maybe a little below average athletically, but he's got the size to make up for it, and that's what makes him so unique and so, and so good at what he does is his size and his talent and his skill. How about that? That was, that was terrific, him just orchestrating that kick and had to wait a second for the roll. Well, he's... He's one of those guys that just got tremendous feel and then the skill to deliver that. What a play, Kyle Anderson. Let's go. Yeah, no, that's what I mean. He's like, he was, wait, come on, let's go. Where are you guys going? Uh, I like Alaska. It's a good airline. How about? Kansas beat Chattanooga by 14. Tim Floyd's hanging there. You're only down eight. Great John Wooden's pyramid of success living on here inside New Pauley Pavilion. And staple for UCLA has been the way they've moved, the way they've played yeah. as a team. Terrific passing all night. They have, they've assisted on 18 of their 20 field goals so far. So really sharing the basketball. When you have a good team with a lot of good players, you hope that a team stays unselfish as the season goes along. And here in the first three games, it seems like this group is pretty unselfish and make the extra pass for the betterment of the team. And it's such an interesting dynamic when you look tonight on the court. You've got a team in James Madison that carries that label on mid-major. And they're playing with a lot of experience and a lot of you know, five fifth-year players on their team. And then you have a coach in the Ben Howland situation that more rooted in what college basketball is becoming at the top level today. Yeah. You don't know how long you're going to have guys. Oh, Powell! Now Norman Powell electrified Pauley Pavilion. We saw, dunk flashes. The dunk yeah, we saw yeah. flashes of that last year where once every couple of games he'd make a play like that. Superior athleticism for Powell. I was going to make about UCLA is they're playing the game where you have to get more immediate chemistry created because you don't know how long a collection of players are going to be together. Absolutely. And the highest rated guys now, if you're recruiting top 10 kids, pretty much all 10 are probably, if you take a look at Powell in transition, pretty much all 10 are one and done. Powell. That's why UCLA wants to run this year because of plays like that. 12 points in the first half for Powell. But you're right, Ted. I mean, you know, you have to recruit that level of player. That's what does it. that mean? They're going to be here for a short time. Look out. Well, the, the big man was getting himself set, but Taylor Bessick, a freshman, raced back and disrupted <laughs> what Josh Smith was trying. Ashley Adams standing by with our 
State Farm Halftime Report here on Pac-12 Networks. And again, the full night, we've got seven or six or seven games, whatever, involving conference teams. Well, Josh Smith, this is the best he's played all year. And it always starts with his energy level. On the offensive end, on the defensive end, we saw a big block earlier. That time, steps into the passing lane and goes coast to coast. So if they can get the consistent effort out of Josh Smith, he is going to be a factor for UCLA. The problem is the first couple of years, it's just been a little too inconsistent. Nine points in the first half for Josh Smith. And UCLA, which in their final four years, they would play a lot of games and win a lot of games with 56 points. <laughs> yes, 56 with a minute 40 to go in the half. But they were lights out defensively, man. Bessick, freshman from Philadelphia, on the board. Well, and, and when you have freshmen that are going to play major roles, I mean, they haven't played a lick of defense, you know, until they get to college. The AU ball, there's no defense being played. And depends on the, the high school program, but haven't played a lot. Haven't been taught how to really guard somebody. And obviously, the Shabazz Muhammad situation drags on, which is unfortunate not only for UCLA, but for the kid, because he really wants to play. Can't believe it's taking this long. You know, news, news stories today highlighting that an appeal has been filed. And there are more twists and turns in, in that story. It's weird about the day, doesn't it? Curry stopped at the rim. UCLA back on the run. Come and on. Adams. This guy. This guy yeah. is a stone cold yeah. gunslinger. Freshman year doing this, making it look easy. Isn't the team downtown the one that's trying to play some showtime again? I'll tell you I what, mean, this has been pretty shot. good. This is a pretty good offensive first half. He's got 16 by the home team. 59 points. But again, I go yeah. back to the mentality of even thinking yes. about pulling the trigger on well, that. I mean, what kind of confidence do you have to have? Defender in your face in transition, a quick dribble, and you're lighting that thing. And he knocks it down. Well, there's two, there's two, and help me, Don, here. I would say there's two elements there, right? There's his willingness, Adams, to shoot it, and the knowledge that the coach is not going to uh, pull him out of the game, right? Well, when you've had the first two games that he's yeah. had, I think you get a little more leeway from the head coach. But if it goes in, it's a good shot. Blocked by David Ware. And then again, they're pushing it. Lead pass, get it out. That's a good looking stroke, too. And there's a reason why he's a good shooter. Good mechanics, like his ball flight, good rotation. And uh, this is some pretty heady stuff he's doing. At, at, at a place like UCLA to come in here, it's like he's on pace for another 20 point night. Now, James Madison playing its first game of the year, and they are. Kind of shows, doesn't it? Yet to get baptized here in the first half at the new Pauly. Now Ben Howland wants, you know, he wants to throttle back here. Hold to the last. Uh, can't even do the math on that. What do they have, Ted? 32? Yeah. Yes. Uh, they were good to go. The guys were going to run up the floor, and then Ben Howland calls it one shot. They called the play. High screen. Parker Drew takes it in. Uh, he has that ability. And then Powell. Blocks a shot 35 feet out. Led by Jordan Adams That's again. <laughs> UCLA exploding on offense here in the first half. 63 points. All